I'm Cody, and this is Time for History. I want to start this first video by talking a little bit about why I believe it's important that we study history. And I hate that we are beginning this video on a depressing note, but I think that's the best place to start. So we're all going to die someday. We will all cease to exist, and we know it. The Greeks talked about this and about how we're not like the gods. The gods are eternal. They live forever. They're immortal, which means that they never have to grow up. They get to live a childish existence forever. They never have any responsibilities. They never have to worry about leaving a legacy or making their life have meaning because they are eternal. The animals are going to die someday, but as much as, as far as we know, they don't think about it. They're not sitting around in existential dread, wondering about the day they're gonna go. But for us humans, we're going to die someday, our life is short, and we realize that this is the case. So we're stuck with this question. We're stuck with wrestling about how we can make our short life as meaningful as it can possibly be. So that when it comes time and we are actually, it's time for us to die, we can look back over our lives and say, we really lived. We lived a life that we could be proud of. We lived the good life. But that's an overwhelming question because what does that even mean? How do we know what the good life is? First of all, we have to figure out what that is because there's so many options. There's so many choices for how we can live our lives. Suddenly we're like the high school student who gets called into the counselor's office and the counselor asks the 17 year old, what do you wanna do for your career? What do you wanna do every day for the rest of your life? And there's so many options and you're overwhelmed and you don't know. Secondly, once we figure out what the good life is, once we figure out the best way to live, then we have to actually put that into practice. We have to live that way every day. Where do we even begin to start figuring this out? For most of us, this begins from our family, from our parents. When we're kids, our parents tell us what our values are. They tell us what they believe is right from wrong. They teach us traditions, they teach us routines, they put us on a path. But is that the right path? If you're anything like me, when I was a kid, I thought my parents were amazing. I thought they were these like godlike creatures who walked around and had answers for everything. But as I got older, I realized that they were people just like me who were simply doing their best. And sometimes they got it right. Sometimes they, they were spot on. But other times they got things wrong. They messed up. And that puts me in a situation where if I want to live the best possible life for myself, do I simply want to follow the model that they gave, knowing that there's a chance that they got it wrong? Or do I want to find my own path, my own authentic life? So I can get it from my parents, or I can just learn from my friends how to live a good life, but I don't know that they have the answers either. We can watch movies and TV shows, and there might be some truth in that, but those are ultimately meant for entertainment. Every TV commercial, every advertisement tells us how to live a good life, but they have ulterior motives. They're trying to sell us something. We can follow traditions, but when we follow traditions, really we're just being bullied by dead people. A long time ago, people who we don't even know their name decided this is how everyone should live. And when we follow a tradition, we're just doing what they said. What is saying that they're right? Slavery was once a tradition. Racism, sexism were all traditions. And they were wrong. So I can't guarantee that just because something is a tradition, that that's the best way to live. So how do we know how to live? What is the good life and how do we follow it? Luckily for us, we're not the first people who ever wrestled with this question. For thousands of years before we were ever born, people wrestled with this question. All of history is a story of people wrestling with how to live. How can I live the best possible life for myself? How can I be as happy as possible? 
How can we create a government that lets people live the best life and organizes society into the best possible way? How can we create the best culture with the best values? How, how can we have the best morals? What are the best morals? How can we create the best situation for dating and relationships and sexuality and family and friendship? How can we create the best religion and the best theology? All of these are questions that people have wrestled with for thousands of years before we were ever born. And sometimes they got a lot of things right, and sometimes they got a lot of things wrong. And they created governments that did really good things, and they created governments that did really bad things, and they created governments that did both. And sometimes people did good and they did bad, and then they, they did both, and it was complicated. And they created religions that did good and did bad and did both, and they created cultures that were equally as complicated. And people rose up and they fought for what they believed in. And sometimes they won, and sometimes they lost, and sometimes they died for what they believed in. And sometimes they got it put into place and it turned it out to actually be bad. And sometimes it turned out to be good. But we had all of that that we could go back and study. And with so many people throughout so much time trying their best to create the best possible life, I feel like there has to be some answers that we can find in the pages of history. It's been said that history is philosophy teaching by example. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. I think we can learn a lot about how to structure our own lives, our own governments, our own values by looking at history and trying to find out what worked, what didn't work, what was good, what was bad, what did people like, what did people not like, what led to horrible things, what led to great things. One historian that I really like is a guy named Benedetto Croce. And Croce was an Italian philosopher back in the 1940s. And he wrote about, and this seems kind of obvious, but he wrote about how when we study history, a lot of times we treat it like we're omnipotent. We're looking at a timeline over here and studying that history over there. But he argues that all history is history of the present. All history is history of current events. So when we're studying history, we're not looking at those people out there. We are part of the story. We're later on in the story, but we are an effect of everything that we're looking at. When we study history, we're not studying something separate from us. We're studying ourselves. We're studying the very nature of what it means to be human. That's what history is. Studying the human condition throughout time. Looking at how we change, looking at how we transform, looking at how we try to answer questions with the hope that maybe we can glean some wisdom that can teach us something about ourselves, about our own times. And that's why I think it's so important that we study history. Now, in the next video, uh, just a heads up, I believe it's also important that we study not just what we agree with, but what we disagree with. So in the next video, we will look at an argument for why we shouldn't study history. Now, I'm not going to agree with them, but I think it's important that we understand the arguments for why we shouldn't study history as well as why we should study history. So I hope you will like, subscribe, and, and stay tuned for the next video. I'm Cody. This is Time for History. I will see you then.